Hello, friends, and welcome to the Reclamation Podcast. I'm your host, Megan Colleen Johnson, and I'm here to guide us in raw conversations about thriving in life and work so that together we can step into personal agency and stop letting life happen to us. We'll cover topics like health, boundaries, communication, finances, and worthiness. That badass business you've been dreaming of, it's not so far off. The desire to wake up feeling fully alive, it's right around the corner. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of the Reclamation Podcast. I'm super pumped about this episode. Today is, this is our, my, only my second time ever having two people on that we're going to be chatting with. So it's going to be so fun. There's three of us here that we get to chat and dive into all kinds of goodness. So let me share a little bit about where I'm at. So I'm in my office Over the past couple months, I've been redecorating my office, so it feels really cozy right now. I've got a lamp on, um, just put some essential oils on my hands, and my dog is sleeping on the floor. So we're just kind of in like a cozy zone in my office tonight, and that's where I'm coming from. And tonight, I have with me Rachel Bellotti, life and soul coach, and Janelle Reisner, content creator and movement coach. So they're both co-creators and co-hosts of the True North Collective podcast and experience. They facilitate community spaces for honest reflection, self-inquiry, light movement, and real conversation as we celebrate being works in progress in finding and living our true north. So welcome to the podcast. I'm so excited to chat with both of you. Thank you. So happy to be here. Yeah. So for everyone listening, I definitely butchered Janelle's name specifically. So let's go ahead and start with you, Janelle. I'd love to hear an intro. Tell us a little bit about yourself and then we'll move on to Rachel. Yeah. Yeah. So originally from Wisconsin, which we just talked about that nice connection point. Um, and you know, background in in marketing and all things. Um, but I can start kind of my journey around the time that this podcast started, um, I was running a boutique fitness studio in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and really enjoying that. And that's where Rachel and I met and around the time that the Turner Collective was created. Since then, have worked in marketing for different tech companies. Um, We've been running the podcast and creating content and always trying to teach some form of fitness and movement in my life because that's one been really important to me and one of my own values in life is just finding a way to stay in motion and moving yeah I love that so much thanks for for that little look into who you are and kind of what you do and then Rachel I'd love if you could do the same thing just fill us in yeah so um my most recent conglomeration of who I am and what I do is a life and soul coach um probably my number one passion, followed by podcasting. Love it. And then I'm also a meditation teacher. My background Mm. is in brand strategy. So I was in the advertising and corporate brand world for a long time and really like started to realize that I had this passion for unlocking people's authenticity and like when they were themselves, how magical and creative they were. So I diverted, I pivoted and um, found life coaching, which I call life and soul because life coaching is a weird phrase to me. (laughs) Um, And so, yeah, I'm also a teen cancer survivor. um, And so I've been slowly learning how to reclaim that story for myself in, in the truth of what it was, not the way other people um, feel most comfortable hearing it. And yeah, a whole bunch of other stuff. I've lived all over the place. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for for sharing that. And I'd love to hear a little bit. So I always love starting the podcast with filling people in on where you're recording from, kind of just what's in front of you, a little bit of setting the stage. So we can do the same thing. So Janelle, where are you at? You Before we started recording, you shared a little bit about you being in an Airbnb and some some quirks and things. Tell us what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I love you like, my dog's here. There's essential oils. I'm like, my power just went out. I'm hoping the Wi-Fi is going to go and my <laughs> like landlord is texting me. But um, I'm actually currently in Grover Beach, California, which is out on the central mm-hmm. coast of California. 
and uh, my space it is an airbnb but it's super cute um you can see or for those of you who can't see i have a nice majesty palm behind me which i just took back from my friend because i used to live here full time um, and actually just returned after seven months on the road and you can also probably hear my dog rolling around on the couch but enjoying some sunshine and just having a nice little small beach home to call mine for now. That's so fun. I love it. And then how about you, Rachel? Yeah, I am in Southern California in Orange County at my parents' house. Moved back here in December of 2020. And what is around me? I'm in my what's deemed my brother's old room that was the biggest room in the house. So I claim I've taken it, I've taken it over. (laughs) So it's a mishmash of like, there's a pinball machine over here and then some singing, like some spiritual uh, Himalayan sea salt and singing bowls over here. And so it's a real mosh posh, but right outside my window, I can see my RV that I just got back from the shop and um, Mm. that I'm getting all fixed up. We're going to the desert tomorrow and doing a shakedown trip because I am going to be living from it in come June is kind of May, June. So I'm kind of getting ready for that. So fun. So exciting. That's, that's awesome. Um, also I'm just jealous that both of you are in very warm places. I keep like, it's getting warmer here, but it's still like, I open the door and it's beautiful outside and I'm like, oh wait, it's still too cold. Like, so very jealous that both of you are in the the warmth and the sunshine. So I'd love now if we can move into hearing a little bit about both of your stories. So what is your story? How did you start? So you both grew up, did you say you grew up in Milwaukee or you just happened to find yourself there? Yeah, because Rachel, you just said you're at your parents' house. So you're just going to have to tell your stories and fill us in on this. So um, Janelle, how about you go first again and, and fill us in just kind of what is your story? How did you start and what did you have to reclaim to really step into this work that you're doing now? Yeah, so that is whew, a journey. It's but, a, yeah, um... that's a, a long train. <laughs> we can take it where, wherever it wants to go. Yeah, I'll, I'll speak to one piece of... Um an item that I recently reclaimed, but I grew up in the suburbs of Milwaukee. So I am from Wisconsin originally, and I lived there for 26 years before I moved to California. And really when we started the podcast, which it's been over four years now, it's almost been five years since we started this project. So we've been doing it for a while, which is pretty wild. Um, was kind of right around the same time that for me, I was running this boutique fitness studio. That was something I always wanted to do. Like if you asked me in college, I went to school for business marketing and I wanted to run some form of a gym and I had been doing it and I did love it, but also I was miserable (laughs) at the same time. Like I was stressed out. I was working a ton. Like I basically had been pushed really to like every single limit out there. And I felt like I had gotten what I wanted, but I still... I like, I wasn't there, if that makes any sense. Like I, yeah. I just wasn't really like, I was, like I said, I was basically kind of miserable in some ways. Like I love the community. I liked the work I was doing, but like who I was, my emotional state, the state of my friendships, like nothing else outside of that aspiration of career really was fulfilling me in that moment. And right around that time, Rachel came to work at the studio, ended up, and I'm sure you can, Rachel, you'll tell your side of this story, but ended up interviewing with me. Um, I recently had one of our studio managers resign and that in itself was like the idea of retraining someone. It was really pushing me over the edge. (laughs) And mind you, I'm like 25. I don't know. You know, I'm just like this young kid just trying to run a, you know, a pretty big, successful business. And when I was introduced to Rachel around that time, I was starting to explore like, what do I want to do with this? Cause this isn't sustainable. Like I can't continue on like this. Um, you know, I was like, my hair was falling out. Like I wasn't, I was not well, um, in many ways, shapes or forms, like emotionally triggered, emotionally shut down. So there was that. And then we started this, the true North collective, um, originally as a blog in a, a project and that had been basically spurred from conversations that Rachel and I had been having when we'd worked together. You know, we talked a lot about work, but then every once in a while we'd be like, you know, I'm like doing this thing. I'm trying to like figure something out about myself. 
And we had noticed that we were doing similar things. Like we started with a whole 30. So nutrition and like fitness, being a fitness studio, we were always doing fitness challenges, but things that felt good for me, like didn't necessarily work for Rachel and vice versa. Um, and so we started to kind of play with that. And at some point we were cleaning bikes for actually an event that we were doing. And I, and I think this is pretty vulnerable for me when I did it because I was just like, Hey, Rachel, like, I think there's something here, but like, I don't really know what it is, but do you want to like start a blog or something? Or like, I don't know, and just throw it in out there. And Rachel's like, uh, sure. I don't know. <laughs> and so <laughs> it sort of became this thing. Um, and yeah. really like, we'll get into the details, but really it was like an unfolding, I think for me of like, truly actually discovering what is my own true north and like what matters to me in life and who am I? And it was sort of like once that first domino was knocked over, you know, it's been the ongoing tumble downward of really just trying to figure out how to live a fulfilling life. So along the way, um, eventually ended up leaving the fitness studio, taking a job out in California, doing that for a while, doing a different job for a tech startup marketing, ended up a whole lot of things, a breakup, um, a selling of a home, a uh, reduction in pay around COVID time that all sort of Mm -hmm. launched me into what was a seven month road trip around the United States. Um, And then uh, getting laid off of my job during the road trip. And, um, but like this really magical experience all in all, like the, I would say it's like a series of unfortunate, fortunate events because it all really led me to the things that I wanted in life. And it was like a true clean house. Um, even though on the surface, when you're like breakup, selling home, getting laid off, they don't sound good. Mm -hmm. Um, but they were really truly just like this beautiful unfolding. Um, and so now I'm back. I just got back two weeks ago, almost now to where I started before I left on my road trip. And now it's the process of rebuilding. So that was like a really, really long story. And I didn't talk about what I reclaimed, but why don't I give Rachel, I'll pass it over to Rachel and then I'll get to it. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. So I am, oh my gosh. Okay. So in the short of it, I would say my life feels like it's been chunked down to thirds. So like the first third of my life included a lot of trauma one of the big ones was having cancer. And through that experience, it was not like I was courageous and I was all those things, but I didn't walk away from that experience empowered or feeling like I understood what life, how special life was. I was, I was, it was terrifying and terrible and experienced bullying and sexual harassment during that time. So there was a lot of really complicated things that I, I actually, didn't talk about for a very long time. I kind of just like serve, you know, went an ED, no evidence of disease. And then I just moved on with my life. Like I was like, okay, we're done. Like, let's go on. And pretty much I numbed out for like, (laughs) as I drank a lot, I, any, any way that I could to just try and, I don't know, fake it (laughs) in the world, like try to force how happy everybody else seemed to be and like, try to be that. And ultimately inside, I was just like, crushed and I didn't know what to do with who I was and I was super successful. So I, uh, on paper, it's like, I worked at target, target corporation. And then I got hired at like the best ad firm in Minneapolis and was climbing the ladder and got moved over to a different ad agency. That was like the biggest design agency in Minneapolis. And then I got hired at Lululemon to head their brand team for their young girls brand called Aviva. And it was just like on paper, everything, you know, I had relationships and like, blah, 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 blah. And there was some good stuff too. I'm like making it sound terrible. It was, I had fun too. But while I was at that job in Vancouver, I was talking to all these young girls and they were, you know, I was supporting, we were supporting them and being able to be anything that they wanted to be. Mm. Um, Coders, motocross athletes, like skateboarders, like all of it, dancers. And and I would go home and be like, what are you doing? Like, I, ha- I mean, I had a mohawk. Like I was, fu- I was having fun and I was like, kind of, my creativity was like kind of coming through, but it was just like kind of a show. It felt like a show a little bit when I look back on it. Mm. Like, I mean, it was who I wanted to be, but it wasn't, 
intrinsically led necessarily. I mean, I guess it kind of was. Anyways, I divulge uh, or I digress. Um, so I ended up doing a, a bike race from Vancouver to Seattle, a two day bike race, ride the conquer cancer. Um, and you, if you were a cancer survivor, you had to put a flag on the back of your bike. And I was like, I ain't doing that. Like, I'm not doing that. Like, no. And my friends were like, you're fucking putting that thing on there. Like, put that fucking flag on there. We raised money for you. We're proud of you. Like, put that flag on there. And I was just like, so I put the flag on and it was pretty profound. While you ride, your name is on your bike. And people, because you have the flag, they're like, we love you, Rachel. You're amazing. Like, yeah, you did it. Like the whole time for two days. And I was just like, holy shit. Like. So I started to get this sense of like sharing my story. I also lost my cousin to neuroblastoma. He was a, like 11 year old. I think he was 11. Mm. Um, and he'd done so much with the cause. And so I kind of just like a lot of things were happening. And I was like, I don't know where I'm supposed to go or what I'm supposed to do, but it's not this. And I need to start like actually figuring out who I am and like, <laughs> like, across all these years at that point I was in my young 30s and it was just like life is passing me by and I'm 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 checking off the boxes on the page but if I died tomorrow I would be really disappointed with how with the choice not disappointed but like I'm not living in the fullest way that I I think that I could and I don't even know how I would do that so I left Lululemon packed what I could in my Honda Element, my orange Honda Element. And I drove across the country to Milwaukee where I was, had been dating somebody long distance. And I was like, well, let's give this a go. So I get to Milwaukee and don't have a job. Don't want to be in advertising or brand strategy anymore. Like, I'm like, what am I doing here? And this new person, like, ah. I grew up in the Chicago area. So I knew the Midwest. Um, but I, I loved cycling, obviously. And so I found this cycling studio and was like, well, let me just get free classes. I'll just like work behind the desk. And then literally the most grueling interview ever with Janelle is like two hours long. <laughs> I was like, I'm just working behind the front desk lady. Like, just like. I think that's going to be a thing on my gravestone. I'm going to die. I'm pretty like, sure. The woman that had the <laughs> most grueling interview for a studio manager position back in <laughs> 2014 yeah. or whatever. <laughs> I mean, it was funny. It was funny. Um. Anyways, so then. At the end, she was like, well, I, I think, would you want to be the, I don't know, assistant studio manager? Oh, it's some bigger role than that. And I was just like, oh, okay, sure. And so long story short, we ended up, like Janelle said, like we'd clean bikes a lot. We, we were really hands-on. Like we did a lot of this stuff and um, we would just start talking about life because I had just gone through this huge, I was going through this huge transition and mm -hmm. I was like, who am I? What, do, what matters? And, you know, she was going through one too. And uh, I think the True North Collective in some ways really uh, saved my life because it was a space for me to really have permission to dig in and to share my work in progress and my messiness without mm. and have it be celebrated. Um, yeah. And I was not only holding that space, I was allowed to show up in that space that way too. And so long story short, I found life coaching. That was like the job I was always meant to do. And then from there, I've kind of just added on elements that support my ability to hold space for myself and others. Um, mm. I have stepped into trauma recovery, um, particularly somatic based practices, which have been very, very, very beneficial for me. Um, and I continue to learn from that space and learn how to own my story and learn how to own my trauma responses. And I'm grateful for Janelle because uh, she has been one of the first people that I have practiced sharing my actual story, like the really gross mm -hmm. stuff um, yeah. in a way that was like awkward. And I didn't know if I could do that. And I was like, she might bolt because that's what I think everybody does. And a lot of people have, but she didn't. And so it's been a really cool space of being able to um, continue to unfold basically and continue to figure out who I am. Um, so like as reclamation for me has been like the authentic story. It's like mm -hmm. not the curated story, not the one that makes other people comfortable, but the one that's yeah. honest, like the truth. 
reclaiming mm-hmm. my, like the truth of what my life has been, even if it makes other people uncomfortable. Um, and yeah, I continue to find new layers with which to share. So. Yeah. Gosh, I love that so much. I kind of rewinding a little bit. It was really beautiful too. Even when you were sharing about how you were talking with those girls in in Vancouver and you were just kind of sharing how like there were threads of who you were like with the Mohawk and pieces like that. There's threads of that authentic self. And I feel like we all kind of have different times when we, we can notice that uh, where it's, you know, there's parts of us that are there but then there's so much of us that we kind of, it gets layered with all these protective mechanisms and conditioning and, you know, there's all the different things, right? And so you can still see you in there, but now there's so much more you, like there's so much more to you that you're able to share with other people and just be able to enjoy yourself. I think that's a huge piece when I just like listening to both of your stories too with Reclamation, I think it's interesting because it's easy to jump to, oh, I'm reclaiming myself so that I can share my story and help other people. And with the life coaching piece too, like you're able to do that and with your podcast, but also just so you get to enjoy being you. And it sounds like for both of your stories, you're both getting to, like you're, you're getting to enjoy yourselves and your life in a new way and like just being you. So I really, really love that. Also, it's just incredibly beautiful how your story is intersected in such like just the right timing, like that, that perfect timing that it was meant to be when you're asking questions, both kind of feeling some similar like sparks of things. So I love that. Love it. Love it. Is there anything else kind of around that you want to talk about? It looks like Janelle, you were going to hit maybe the mic. So, oh. Yeah. Um, well, what I was just going to say is something that we've been talking about in the podcast a lot and I wish I could probably find it if I had dug on my phone, but I just sent Rachel something with like the serendipitous intersection of us around is like the definition of a soulmate. And I think mm. so many people are searching for this like romantic partner soulmate. And in Rachel, if you remember what it was, I'm probably not going to get it totally right, but it was basically like a soulmate is the person that like pushes you to like see yourself in a different way and like you know be better yourself and like truly rise to who you are it's not the person that makes you feel comfortable necessarily all the time and I just sent it to Rachel and I was like well this is what a soulmate is like pretty sure you're mine (laughs) at least you know thus far in life and I think that has just been like a really cool perspective um shift to being someone I mean no matter where you grew up but also I think the Midwest there's like a lot of really solid values around like you're a woman, find a mm. partner, find a man, you know, yeah. get the security yes. that way. And like everyone has a conditioning, but I do think it's deeper from the Midwest, at least it has been from my experience. Mm-hmm. And so I know like both Rachel and I have also been kind of like reclaiming our definitions around soulmates. When you brought that up, it, yeah. I was like, it was, it was like that the per- right person at the right time. And like, I think our paths were meant to cross. Totally. That's so beautiful. Did you find it, Rachel? I'm like, come on, come on, come on. (laughs) If not, that's okay. (laughs) I know. I can't, I don't know. We, we had a real long (laughs) text conversation last night. I have never been on dating apps and I broke up with my boyfriend of seven years in December. And so I've never been in a dating app before, like two days ago. And so I'm like, okay, Janelle, so I need you to explain to me, like, (laughs) so that's why I'm like, I got to get through all like it's okay. Everybody gets ghosted. Like (laughs) girl, it wasn't even through text though. It wasn't through text. I found it. It was on Instagram. Here you go. It says, uh, your soulmate is not someone who comes to you peacefully. It is who comes to you, making you question things, who forces you to look at things that changes your reality. Someone who marks a before Mm -hmm. and after in your life. It is not a fantasy person that everyone has idealized, but an ordinary person who challenges you, but also makes your days better. And that was from the mm. angry therapist. And that was way more beautiful, said, beautifully said than what I just tried <laughs> to like recreate it. So I'm glad we found it. Yeah, it's amazing. I love it. Were you going to say something, Rachel? Um, well, I was going to kind of like something that stuck out to me in your reflection of hearing me talk was, um, 
I, I loved the grounding that in all of those moments, even when it felt like I was numbed out, there have been a lot of people who are like, no way you were totally bloody. Like you were that. And I, you know, I was, um, and like, I, sh- so I shaved my head for the fourth time, um, a month ago. And I would say every time was an iteration of me that was like trying to come out, but, um, mm. there's an element this time of, yes, those expressions were me, but this time it was what I'm doing. The things that while at the surface may just seem like, Oh, Rachel doing her thing again. Um, it was for me, like the intention behind it is so much more not to like, not for shock value, not to try to be unique, not to try to like, Mm. it's, it's for me. And the only person who can really maybe recognize that is myself. Um, but it feels profoundly different than all the other times. Um, and that, you know, the head shaving is one element, but I think there's a lot of things that are coming forth right now that I'm almost like re-experiencing being back home with my parents. Like I'm, I'm getting the chance to, to do it again, you know, maybe for like the 10th time, sometimes the second time, but like for an nth time and to do it from a place where it is for me and it's much more slowed down. And so that, that is what feels different from all the other times, even though it does at the surface, you know, it was me. Um, the intention was different. So. Yeah, no, that's, I've, I love that thought process and just kind of that, that realization too, because that does, like, I'm imagining myself in my own story and I can picture that shift. And like, I can remember that shift in myself when it was it, this place of being aware of what other people were thinking even, and, you know, just kind of fitting into that almost at a subconscious level following the mold kind of, you know, not fully realizing it. And then suddenly there was, you know, that point that like pivotal moment where then it shifts and suddenly it's like, oh, I'm just going to be myself. And I think there's a, an interesting space there. Cause there's a lot of curiosity that I think is really like that space is so much more playful. And I, I personally find that in reclamation, the process of reclamation, it is a lot of curiosity and just doing things to get to know ourselves. And there's no end point. We get to just have kind of fun with that, which I think is really beautiful. So I love that, that thought too, of just like that. I don't know. I could just picture it in my brain when I went from that kind of subconscious being aware of other people. And then that shift to, oh, I'm just going to do this for me. I'm just going to, you know, have a little fun with this and try different things. It doesn't matter if other people understand the process or not. It's just, let's try this. Let's just, you know, explore a little bit. So that's really cool. Yeah. I, I explain it to myself as like, I could spin anything into anything. So like prior, it was like, I could take the head shaving and I, I, no matter who I was talking to, I could spin it in a way that would make them see it as an empowering move, a power move. Um, Mm. And now I'm not worried about that anymore. I'm not trying to spin anything. I'm just like, I'm doing this and you get to experience me however you do. And I'm cool with it. And I, I don't need to spin anything for you. I don't need to power move anything. I get to just take that package off and just be me and like, let it be. Yeah. Yeah. So good. So good. Awesome. Were you going to say something? Yeah, in the process of reclamation to the one of the things that I've been playing with that I had really struggled with in 2020 is I grew up as like a very creative kid. I acted, I did, you know, all like the theater, the performing things and um like a performer was always a part of who I was and like I I think I texted my mom a while back and I was like, "Mom, when do you remember seeing me the most alive as a child?" And she's like, when we would set up the video camera and you would stand on the couch and you would dance and sing and just film yourself doing it. But within like a, the past couple of years and as I was, you know, in this unfolding, something that I realized is that like performing also became almost a survival tactic or like a mm. way to fit in or make sure that people liked me or to get what I wanted. And when I realized that, 
I actually really ended up like rejecting that part of me. And I was like, Oh, it's bad. It's like this thing that I do for Mm. external validation. It's not good. Like you can't do that. You use it to manipulate people without even like realizing it. Um, and when you and I originally spoke, I was like, that's interesting. Like, what am I reclaiming? And that was like the answer. It was my performer because I realized like, rather than making it bad, it was just, I was using it like for external reasons. So as Rachel saying, like doing things for me, it's like, no, like I Mm -hmm. actually genuinely love performing and like being fun and being silly and being light, um, and like making people laugh or, or whatever it may be. Um, but like, I hadn't been doing it for me. So that was like the part of the rejection and then the shame of like having the side of me that was what I had labeled at the time, quote unquote, bad. Um, and then having to like come back to it, but now it's like the reintegration of that side, but again, doing it from a grounded place of for myself. And it's just like, like nothing has really changed other than my mindset around it, which is kind of, (laughs) it's like the weird thing, right? It's like the performer is good or I don't know. I probably didn't even think that much about it. And then it was bad and now it's good, but, um, you know, really doing like figuring out how to do it for you and accepting it for you. And that's like, I think such a key piece of reclaiming your story. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. I love that. I love that example too. Cause I feel like a lot of us in different ways, I think we can relate to that too. I feel like there's a season, you know, as kids, we, we typically do whatever we want and we don't really think about it. And then there becomes, it's like that instinctual thing, you know, that belonging piece where suddenly we realize, oh, I have to belong. Oh, I need to, you know, be part of the tribe. It's like that, that more primal piece of us. That's like, you need to belong to the tribe, even though we've kind of evolved from that place. And then as we get older, depending on if we decide to to step into it, you know, we can suddenly realize again, oh, actually there's people that I can belong to that will accept me fully as my full, whole crazy self however I want to be. And it doesn't matter, but it is that interesting season too, like where there's that shift from being our full selves, trying to fit in and belong, then recognizing belonging to ourselves is actually more important. And we can, you know, find those soulmates. They're out there. (laughs) Yeah. Hey, hey, it's Megan here. We'll get right back into today's conversation, but before we do, I'm here to let you know just a little bit about my life coaching and creative consulting. As a coach, I work with creatives, misfits, and holy outsiders who often feel trapped in overwhelm, overgiving, and fear, but who also have a passion for doing something meaningful in the world. These folks are ready to hand back their past programming and rise as the leader of their own life. If this sounds like you, and you are so ready to start your own reclamation journey, let's chat. I invite you to book a free consultation with me at my website, megscolleen.com. That's M-E-G-S-C-O-L-L-E-E-N.com. Now let's dive back into today's conversation. Is there anything else here that you want to, to share with the listeners? I know, typically speaking, I have like a primary topic for reclaiming. And with both of you, I'm sure those topics are kind of different. So I'd be curious, as you're thinking about your own story, what do you feel like the theme is for your story that you want to share at this point? Like, what is that kind of, if you were to title the podcast for your unique story, what would it be? Reclaiming. That's a hard, it's such a hard question. <laughs> um, okay. The, what came to me was truth. Mm. It's funny because when Janelle gave that example, actually what I had first written down was depth and safety, which is like depth for me is Janelle's performer. So I have just like a deep, deep, deep well of uh, an ability to go very, very deep anywhere with anyone on pretty much anything. And I I know how to do it um, without much anything. Um, what it means is that a lot of times it would, I would be in situations where people didn't want to go deep. And that is like always my comfort zone, but it was rejected. And so I rejected that part of myself for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've slowly been reclaiming the ownership of that depth without it being my only form of identity. Uh, I still am like 
goofy and I talk about poop all the time. And like, I don't, I'm like, have a very like range of humor and like, you know, but, um, a big part of me is that ability to really go there. Um, honestly at the drop of a hat, I can. And, um, and the safety is, has been a vehicle that has allowed me to know that it's okay for me to, to go there and to be that full expression of myself and that it's okay if other people can't meet me there, even ever, like, it doesn't mean that I have to stop or that there's anything wrong with me or that there's anything wrong with them. And so I I think the, the bigger one there is truth. It's like, I'm being true to Mm -hmm. who, who I actually am. And I'm doing it in a way that, you know, feels safe and, and true for me. And I honestly, I feel like that's like from a true North collective standpoint, it's, it kind of is what we're doing there too. It's like, how do we allow people to experience the truest version of themselves for themselves and to not have to be anywhere except right there with themselves in the messiness and the beautifulness of it. And, and to just breathe with themselves Mm -hmm. and us as just like, oh shit, that is like kind of a weird part of me, but it also is like a magical part of me. And I didn't ever get to experience that until now. Yeah. The being seen and not having it rejected. Like, I feel like our community is so beautiful in that sense that Mm. people are willing, this, the space is safe and people are willing to go there and share. I was going to say, to answer your question, which is kind of funny, it's like a little bit of the opposite. Like, I think they both lead to truth, but (laughs) on my end, like other than the performing side, I feel like I've very much been conditioned to seek safety. And so I've been playing it with it probably like on the other end of the spectrum where like, I've always done the right, you know, the quote unquote right thing or followed the blueprint or done the safe thing or like looked for the secure thing, kind of. Like I haven't, I haven't, but that's like, I think my natural first inclination, like most people probably, but what I think maybe I'm more so trying to reclaim is like the fearlessness and the adventure and like the just mm. not playing it safe. Like the create, for example, in my mind, like creative pursuits don't feel safe, right? Like I should focus on I don't know, something more secure that can then make me money. And so like, that is something I've been leaning into on the, on the not non-safe, I don't know, the, <laughs> the bold uh, side, whatever you want to label it, but um, like trying to lean into just like that. I don't want to say I, the, the word fearless. It's not fearless because I have the fear, but it is not letting it's the fear stop me. Exactly. Like the possibility of like creating my own world which again I think they both connect back to truth but it's just sort of interesting like the I don't know the different perspective or the yin and the yang as Rachel and I feel like many times are to each other (laughs) yeah well I think that's really interesting and beautiful too because your stories are different and like it sounds like you came from different places as well so you're both on this journey and you're both seeking that true north I think what's funny about it is when we think of like a compass, there's only one true north, but the reality is in our lives, like each of us has our own true north, which I think is kind of beautiful and nuanced. So you're both seeking your own unique true north. And so that it is a little different, even if it has like through lines that are similar, you get to be your your own unique selves in a kind of a magical way. So it's really cool. I love that. There's another interesting thing. Um, that I've been sitting with and we both are like into Enneagram. And so Janelle's a three, I'm a four. And so whenever they'll be like the pairings and how they work and like, we're always sending each other things that are like, look, this is why we get along. And this is totally when we don't, I, we aren't. And, (laughs) (laughs) and anyways, last night when we were having the whole like dating app tutorial, I had this aha of like, oh my gosh, I think that I, hold the space for Janelle to go deeply inward. And I'm realizing that she holds a space for me to be able to go outward. And I think I am really good at going deep down and she's really good at going like out and like expanding. And I don't know, I, I'm actually, I have the chills right now thinking about it. 
because both of those things are the dance of like mm-hmm. life. And, um, and so I, it's not the reason that we get along, but it's one that I'm very present to right now of like how grateful I am to have somebody who wants to explore what my magic is and who wants to share their magic with me and vice versa. It's like this really mm-hmm. cool push and pull. And again, sometimes we've definitely over the last five years, I guess, I can't believe that. I feel like I've known you my whole life, honestly. There's definitely been times where it's been hard because those are pol- those can be polarizing. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've found, you know, between the two of us, one of the two of us or both of us, um, we always seem to come back. I think there's something in Janelle that I want to be able to cultivate within myself. And I would imagine the same is true. Um, but I am putting words in your mouth. So you can tell me if I'm wrong. I'm shaking my head. Yes. <laughs> I also love whenever we're guests on podcasts. Cause I feel like we're just like, Rachel, I love you. I, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really cool though. And that's it. It's really beautiful when we can find that community and it sounds like you cultivate that community for other people as well so that there is that depth of growth like that's why I think community is such a beautiful space we actually reclaiming self is important and sometimes we find we can actually reclaim ourselves better in different ways when we have that community of people that can mirror to us the other things that we also want to cultivate and like co-create in our lives so that's really cool. Yeah, so much. So that's one of um, we have a a monthly event called the collective and it's just like a free community gathering where we lightly facilitate. But really, we say we're fellow travelers in the group just sharing our experiences. And I love when people will ask, like, what are you trying to get out of today? Or like, why did you show up? And a lot of people are just like, I'm here to listen to other people and like take what works Mm. for me and, you know, leave what doesn't. But by us. Um, and the people in our community like authentically showing up or sharing or just like having that space to go there the things that I mean I've learned about myself like I won't even speak out of the community but just even having podcast guests on and having the space to listen to their stories and like it has profoundly changed who I am as a human to be able to Mm -hmm. be in those spaces and to be able to like see like you said the through lines and the mess and the things that I was like I thought I was the only like weird person that was experiencing that shit show but like oh look like a bunch of other people actually are or like other people feel shame about this or the thing I thought I felt shame about like people look at me and they're like oh like why would you be ashamed about that so it it, it's like it's also the reclaiming of your story I mean we'll go back to the theme it's like in Mm -hmm. those spaces you are reclaiming your own story and like letting go for me, it was like letting go of the shame around it. It's like any time that I can almost like confess, I don't know, maybe that's where confessionals came from and like the Catholic church for like, you know, confessing these things that you think are like so gross or nasty or messy about yourself. And then you say them out loud to a group of people that are just like, oh yeah, I got that too. And you're like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like this immediate way, you know, being um, lifted of like, oh, I'm not some like weird fucked up human that, you know, is having this experience that no one else is having. And like, I, when we're talking about the sense for community and like that tribal instinct, like Mm -hmm. we're part of the tribe, but we're just not hiding that part of the tribal experience anymore. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So I'd love to transition and move to empowering tips and implementation before I do. Is there anything else here? Just want to make sure. (laughs) Good. All right. Cool. So I'm curious if you have from your reclamation journeys, do you have empowering tips that you would like to share with the listeners? I would say one, like find that community. I think that's like a pretty universal one. Um, We talk like a lot about on the podcast, everyone's journey is very different. And so we try to be like mindful of, I think the tips that we share because like what works for me, like we talked about at the beginning when we were doing a whole 30, like what works for me might not work for someone else. But I do think the the community piece is pretty um, universal. Like, so figure out like what community means to you, figure out what kind of community you're drawn to and like experiment with it, go to some. If like, it's not a good fit for you, then like, cool, find a different one. Um, But yeah, like find those people that allow you to share your story and champion your story. Yeah, I had that on my list as well. The other one, that I have, which isn't super succinct, but it's the idea of like, 
playing with what's yours and what isn't. Um, Mm. so really, you know, it's a muscle, it's a practice. Um, but I've found for myself and even to kind of like keep going where Janelle was, which is like every person's experience is different. So we try not to like over prescribe it too much or become the expert too much because I'm, you know, we're, it's a case study of one. And, and if somebody is like really seeking and thinking that you hold their blueprint, it's not sustainable. And so I think one of the things that we really do well in the space holding is, is, um, inviting everybody to recognize like what is theirs and then allow other people to own what, um, okay. I didn't say that very well. Like I own what is mine and like, this is my perspective, but I, I honor you and your perspective as well. So being able to, Mm. to delineate that and not needing it to kind of be the same thing. Um, discernment is kind of that, but also it's really just that practice of like, okay, this is mine and that's yours. And I can allow both to coexist. Yeah. Yeah. And similar, I think something we've been noticing a lot in our conversations is just like letting go of the definition of good and bad too. Like in your journey of trying to reclaim, like I had shared in my story, it's like something was basically neutral because I didn't think about it. It was me. And then I made it bad. And now I'm, I guess, kind of making it good, but hopefully just like reclaiming it, (laughs) letting it be neutral again. But Um, I think that was like a really big hang up for me for a long time of like making my actions bad, making parts of myself bad, making, making things mean something that they actually Mm -hmm. didn't need to mean. And I feel like you can say that so easily, but like the practice of, it's like basically changing your belief system over time around like what's okay and what's not, um, and it's, I'm like in it every single day. Like, even when I think I get it in one area, it's like, I'll be doing something else and be like, well, I said I wasn't going to do that, but I'm doing it. And now I'm like making it bad because I said something and da da da, you know, and just like almost being like, you're fine. Like it, you can't get it wrong. Basically like just do something and you're good. <laughs> so. Yeah. I love that. It's to me, I feel like that's like the both and. So it's like kind of just saying everything's both. like it's, it's both and it's, and it's all of it. It's all, all of it's here, all of it's welcome. Yeah. Bringing it kind of to that neutral space, but just like also just recognizing some things, you know, both are welcome. There's not, you know, we don't have to, to polarize it and choose one or the other. Like our culture often likes to, to get us to do. <laughs> I got my PhD in black and white thinking, (laughs) trying to like live in the gray a little bit more here. Yeah. Well, I know like for me, I grew up in the, um, evangelical Christian church. And so for that as well, it's like, even just the concept of thinking about like that in the Bible, when it talks about being lukewarm and it's like a very, they talk about being lukewarm as being this really negative thing. At least it, that's how it's taught in the church. You like, you have to, you have to be hot or be cold. Don't be lukewarm. So it's that polarization, like that encouragement of polarization, but really so much of life is kind of in that mid space. So much of life is nuanced and yeah, that's that. just an example from my experience. Cool. But. Like, no, quote of the podcast, I'm lukewarm. <laughs> so I'm going to take away from this. <laughs> like, I will be lukewarm right now. <laughs> it's a really empowering invitation, to be honest. Like, is, I know. I'm, like, I, I'm serious. I'm going to take that. Yeah. Like, when I'm being polarizing, I'm going to be like, Janelle, be lukewarm right now. Be yeah. Lukewarm. <laughs> I love that. Totally. Something I, else I wanted to quick circle back to when you guys were talking about community and just talking about how everyone has their own experience, inserting my experience for a moment. Something that I noticed with community too is on this journey, as you know, we're reclaiming ourselves as we're finding our true north is sometimes like for me, I had to find, I had to create my, like, I guess you could call it like a support team or like my, my people first. So I like had my life coach and I had my chiropractor and like I had my, my life partner. And so I like, I had these people so that I could hear myself first before I sought out community. And then I started entering those community spaces. So I feel like that's another kind of nuance to how everyone has their own experience and community is, is crucial in the process. And maybe community looks like a support team right now. Maybe community looks different for you. And like, there's, again, there's that nuance. It doesn't have to be one or the other. It's, it's the lukewarm, whatever is, whatever is good for you is good for you. (laughs) 
Totally. I like that too. Cause um, again, I'll be like the, another viewpoint of it. Like for me, that community originally almost had to be strangers because there were, the stakes mm. were low with strangers. Yeah. And so like the people in my life had already expected that I was a certain way and it was harder for me to show up in a different way and be like, no, this is the new me now. And I'm still like playing with that in many areas of my life. So I share that as like, sometimes your support system is the people closest to you. Or sometimes for some people, it's like, I'm going to play with this stranger, like I'm, you know, out in the wild and like show up as who I authentically am because I literally have nothing to lose. If the stranger doesn't like me, I'll probably never see them again. Um, yeah. And so like, I like that the playgrounds can be different depending on who you have in your life. Totally. Yeah. That's awesome. There's one other thing I wanted to mention because you were just talking about strangers and that made me circle back to something that keeps hitting my head when you're talking about the dating app. This is just random and funny. I don't know if my husband will put this in the podcast or not, but whatever. If you haven't, I don't know if you're, if you like um, Megan Mullally, it's, do you know who Megan Mullally is? I don't know. It sounds familiar. Where's uh, I don't think she, I do. Okay, you know Parks and Rec? Yeah. Ron Swanson, she plays his wife in that, but she's actually yes. a real wife. So, oh, I actually didn't know that. Okay, continue. Yeah, so if you search on YouTube, Megan Mullally, and she does this, like, uh, what's the dating app that's, like, everybody makes fun of, but... Tinder. Tinder, yes. So she does a Tinder takeover, and it is the funniest thing I have ever ever seen like don't even watch the other celebrities that do it because they're just not as funny as her like you watch hers and the rest of them are like so lame but she is so hilarious I can't so I think I've seen that because they released it on Hulu and like the footage was really old okay hilarious and what Rachel and I did because this is like again hobby actually I think you should leave it in but if if you edit it out that's fine but what we've been doing because I have like a side YouTube thing where I take tinder dates into haunted hotels and film it so we were just like going over and like Rachel and I when she first saw that instead of a dating app it was just so fun because we're basically doing like that I think was inspired from tinder takeover is what I'm getting at of like where you bring up someone's dating profile and granted we're not messaging people but like they do on there but just like the analyze the you know the photos and like Mm -hmm. so what do you deduce from these five photos in this one (laughs) sentence bio what kind of person is this guy and yeah I I think there was a lot of inspiration from that (laughs) I love it too funny too funny awesome so wrap up questions what is one way you slow down amidst our busy world walking in nature (laughs) I was muted (laughs) (laughs) I was yelling. I was yelling while I was on mute that you're muted. (laughs) (laughs) Walking in nature. Walking in nature saved my life. Yeah. Rachel, you can't steal my answers like that. I don't like going second. (laughs) That's what I was gonna say. (laughs) I feel like that has been um a huge part of mine too, like walking in nature alone. Yeah. So that's not very fun that we said the same one, but that's okay. No, I love it. It's good. It's a good one. It's like, I feel like nature is one of the most supportive ways to slow down, it, you know, getting away from the screens, getting away from all of the, the stimulation that we experience in our day to day and just being able to breathe. It's so good. Totally. If you want to practice, uh, practice being you with no one around, that's what I used to do. I'd go way out in nature by myself and I would talk to myself for hours. That's good practice. <laughs> yes. Oh, I love that. That's so good. And then who are a couple of your current role models? I have, okay, so there, uh, there are going to be people that maybe you'd have never heard of, but because that's- That's totally great. Who I am. <laughs> okay, so Katie Gallagher in Vancouver, baller human. Look her up. She's amazing. Do you, do you want me to give it any description to her or just- say Sure. Her For some reason, that sounds familiar. She, she started Tight Club, um, which is a workout community, a fitness community, but it's a, so inclusive and she's just an incredible human. So I became friends with her when I lived up there and she just, her energy and her ability to pull people in is just unreal. Mm. Um, so she always stands out for me as just like somebody who's just being her and is a magnet as a result of that. Yeah. Um, Ken Miles is the race car driver from Ford versus Ferrari. And I recently learned about him. But what I love about him is that he, if you watch the movie, Ken Miles, the way he approaches it, 
he's incredible. He does it for the love of the thing. <laughs> and <laughs> I want to emulate that. I want to do things for the love of it, not because I'm winning mm. or like, you know, I just air quoted. Um, and then David Bowie, because duh. And India Moore, I, they are amazing. I just, every single day when they show up on my feed, I'm just like, thank you for being you and giving me permission to be a little bit more me. Um, and then finally, um, a person that I've uh, started following, Damon Bell Holter. He used to be a basketball player and he now is reclaiming his indigenous, um, he's a Haida, Haida tribe in Alaska. And he's starting to work with young, young boys specifically, but young kids to really reclaim their tribal uh, history. Mm. And, and, and he speaks a lot to like, how do you know who you are if you don't know where you come from um, yeah. amongst other things. So he continues to be an inspiration for me. So those are my, my peeps today. That's really cool. Yeah. Some of mine are new. Some of them are pretty consistent. So I've been doing inner child work. So the two that come up to me, cause I just meditated on this two days ago was when I think of who my magnetic father would be, it's Stephen King, because I'm trying to like birth all of these like weird creative things. And I feel like he is the epitome of that. Um, and just like putting himself out there and who would have thought, I feel like if we go back to what we've been talking about, like reclaiming things, I wonder if Stephen King at some point was like, these are really fucked up thoughts. <laughs> then he channeled them and he used them. Um, so Stephen King and then Lizzo's mom, because anyone who can raise a child that has like that much confidence and self-acceptance, oh gosh, yeah. like she's been my magnetic mom lately. Um, and then more consistent ones. I'm a huge Gary Vee fan from the stand of like content creation and just mm -hmm. like what he stands for. And I think he's done some like really cool pivots um, in the business world. And then I want to do like, this is, a, this is a person I know in my personal life, but has been super expansive for me. I met someone on the road. His name is Cameron Wyatt. Um, and he's a video editor and he lives out of his RV and just like lives a super chill, like only works, you know, as much as he needs or wants to, and like lives this very minimalistic lifestyle, but has like all this freedom. Um, so I'm going to say he's my role model today. Cause I'm channeling that quite a bit and like trying to figure out how, to simplify my life and like really live it in the way that I want to without being overly attached to the things that we generally value in society. Yeah, that's so good. I love that. I, whenever I think of just different people that I consider kind of a role model that I desire to emulate, I feel like it changes frequently. Like, you know, like there's like consistent ones and then there's some that just like come into your life and you're like, that person, they're just, there's something there. There's something there. So I love that you spoke that out. That's awesome. So good. And then how can we find and support you online? If you want to follow either of us, I, I am at Instagram. <laughs> I'm on Instagram <laughs> at rachel.bilotti. Um, that's the best way for me. And then like Linktree, all that stuff. But the True North Collective underscore is our Instagram handle. And then the True North Collective.org is our website. Between those two, you can sign up for our newsletter, um, listen to the podcast, get involved in the collective, which are the free community events each month. We also have workshops that happen each month. Um, and we're continuing to grow and expand to figure out how these conversations can happen and not be gated just based on a podcast framework. Mm -hmm. So we're excited to, to continue to, to play with that. Yeah, yeah, definitely come play with us. And then yeah, if you want my Instagram handle, it's uh, at Janelle Reese, which is J-A-Y-N-E-L-R-E-E-S-E. -E -E. I don't know, I'm sure you'll put it in the show notes. Yes, I'll make sure to put it in Someday I'll actually yes. spell like my real name, but. <laughs> Perfect, that's awesome. And then as we're wrapping up, is there anything else you feel like you just want to speak out before we complete our time? I just want to say I love this topic. I think it's so... I don't know. It's just so relevant. And I, I don't think a lot of us realize that we're either in the process or have gone through the, I mean, we're always in the process, but like have gone through levels of the process. Um, so I just appreciate that you're creating this space and this platform where people can play and like hear other people's stories and um, hopefully start to accept their own story and the aspects of themselves that maybe in the past they have not. Mm, I love that. And I will just say out loud, I am emerging 
It was my intention at the beginning of the year. And I rechecked in with my vision board this morning. And I was like, oh man, this vision board is on point for this year for me. Like, awesome. And like that word of emerging feels, it feels like I'm doing the things that allow me to continue to emerge um, as the person that I have always been. And it's a really cool thing. So I just want to acknowledge myself. Yeah. Gosh, I love that. So beautiful. Well, thank you both for being here. Um, I'm so excited to, to share this and yeah. Thank you everyone for listening. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of the reclamation podcast. I hope it served you on your own reclamation journey and know that I am rooting for you all the way. If you are desiring support on your journey, head to megscolleen.com. That's M-E-G-S-C-O-L-L-E-E-N.com to learn more about me and my current coaching offerings and availability. If you want to learn more about the show guests, head to the show website, thereclamationpodcast.com. And last, but definitely not least, if you found value in the show, sharing this episode with friends and posting a quick review is always appreciated. As always, reclamation is yours.